We're picking up with our changing attitudes and values as a result of the Industrial Revolution with part two, which focuses on rights for women. Most people point to the Women's Rights Convention held in July 1848 at Seneca Falls, New York, as the beginning of the women's rights movement. It's important to note, however, this connection between women's suffrage movement and the abolitionist movement. In fact, the very idea for the Seneca Falls Convention was sparked when Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott met in 1840 in London while attending the World Anti-Slavery Convention. They had both come with their husbands who were prominent anti-slavery activists, but because they were women, they weren't allowed to sit. Now, as you know, slavery is ultimately outlawed in the United States as a result of the U.S. Civil War. In the middle of the war, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, and then when the war was over, the 13th Amendment outlawed slavery in the entire country. However, an earlier Supreme Court Dred Scott decision had said that freed blacks were not citizens. And so it took... Um, the 14th Amendment to sort of correct the situation where there were separate laws for freed blacks and whites. And so this 14th Amendment gave very specific birthright citizenship for anybody who was born in the United States. And it didn't matter the circumstances. It didn't matter if their parents were citizens. It didn't matter if they were from this country or were from another country or were, you know, taken here in slavery. And so we do have this really unique citizenship rule due to the 14th Amendment. And it's important to note in all the current controversy the reason why our country has such a law. Anyway, when the 14th Amendment is passed, women say to themselves, hey, we were born in the United States, therefore we must be citizens as well. And they start demanding rights, like the right to vote, and they go up to their polling booths you know, with their birth certificate saying, give me a ballot. And lawsuits are flying, and the decisions work their way up the court system, and ultimately it's deemed that, yeah, it's really ambiguous. You know, It doesn't really say anything about who has the right to vote. So that's where the 15th Amendment comes in, which specifically grants voting rights to men, but excludes all women. Okay, Black men can vote, but no women can vote. Now, one of the most eloquent and outspoken women's rights advocates was a former slave by the name of Sojourner Truth. Her real name was Isabella, and she was born into slavery in upstate New York. She'd been sold again and again and again since the age of nine, often into very extremely cruel situations. She was forced to marry an older slave when she was still a teenager. She had many children who were taken from her. She ultimately escaped a dreadful situation about a year before slavery was outlawed in New York. And throughout her ordeals, she took great comfort in religion and ultimately became a preacher. In 1854, she makes this famous speech at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention where she pointed out the hypocrisy in the argument against women's rights, namely the fact that women were too delicate and needed protection. And she famously said, you know, that man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and over mud puddles and all this. Nobody ever helps me or gives me any best place and ain't I a woman? Um, you know, she basically says, look at me, you know, look at my arm, look at the way I've been whipped and, and been forced to do hard labor. And, you know, I've given birth to children and you don't even let me be a mother. You take my kids from me. It's a wicked, wicked argument that, you know, draws the attention of everybody, including the president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. But ultimately, you know, a good speech at the end of the day is still a good speech, and it's really not very effective in changing the um, people's minds who had power, namely the men. And so, you know, Emmeline Pankhurst, who was a British women's suffragist, uh, said, you know, we really need to take aggressive tactics if we'd like the men to pay attention to us. You know, men don't care about life. They care about their property. And so she went around, you know, burning buildings and smashing windows. And, you know, she had some success, but it's really not until 1920 